going to start this video by explaining how the Mark IV Automag works. Because really it is the simpler system. And I'll explain the Mark V and especially how the internals work. I'll start by explaining the blowback action of the Automag. It's a little hard to see, but in there you can see a brass bar. And just in front of it is the rotor. You can more easily see that rotor if I turn it a bit. You can see it just rests on that brass bar. And that bar is linked to the bolt here, which is held forward by a very light coil spring. What this means is that for this rotor to move, it actually has to push that bar backwards. Not all the way, maybe only to about here. But there's so much force on that rotor that inertia causes it to move all the way back until it impacts this little piece here. But more on that later. So in action. So the way that works is if you can imagine force on this rotor once I pull the trigger, that rotor is released. You can see it's pushing back directly on that brass bar. Again, it only gets back to about here, but inertia causes it to move the rest of the way. Obviously, if I'm pulling it slowly, there is no inertia. Once it gets all the way back, it impacts this piece that I pointed out before. You can see if that moves back, I'll push it back manually. It actually pushes that shell out of the magazine. Normally it would eject properly. So it's easy to understand if I take the magazine out. You can imagine that piece is pushing on this part of the shell right here. And the spring here is stiff enough that the spring alone will eject that shell just like that. So once the shell gets pushed past those little feed lips, the follower, or the shells under it, will push it up and out of the action. Now normally they'd go directly up, but you can see there's a ramp in there that pushes the shell out to the side. And with this view, you can better see that piece that the bolt pushes back on. To eject the shells. This is a simpler system, but it doesn't work with light ammo. Here I've got a number 16 rubber band on it, and one shell loaded in the magazine. As you can see, it just barely moves the bolt, and certainly not far enough to kick that shell out of the magazine. So it needs high powered rubber bands to work. This is where the Mark V comes in. These internal parts are slightly different. The main difference is that the trigger now acts on this part here, which as you remember, is that part that pushes the shells out. So even with light ammo, it will still eject shells. So as I pull the trigger, you'll notice this releaser moves and this part moves too. And I've set up those parts so the rubber band is released and a shell is kicked out at about the same time. Watch that again. And this rotor just got stuck there. But I'll fix that up. Now my magazine is empty. And we see another feature of this system, which is a last shot hold open. Now that the magazine is empty, the follower actually sticks up and prevents this part from moving. I cannot actually shoot it anymore until I've changed magazines or refilled this one. So with the magazine in, this 
now has some shells to push back on. The bolt works the same as it did in the Mark IV. You have a brass pin behind the releaser and when you pull the trigger I'm going to remove the magazine so that I can actually do that. When you pull the trigger, the rotor will kick the bolt back.